<clears throat> hey there, grumpy old fart here. Uh, I'm doing an advanced Judges and Dragons monster video on the Draco Lisk. One of my viewers requested I, I do a video on this, and so here we go. The Draco Lisk is an odd duck in the advanced Dungeons and Dragons world. It's not quite a dragon, it's not quite a basilisk, but it has many of the abilities of both. The book says it is most likely the offspring of a natural mating between a black dragon and a large basilisk. I tend to think that it's more likely a genetic splicing of those two creatures by some wizard, alchemist, or, you know, whatever, for some reason. Either way, the critter is very effective. The Dracolisk can be found on page 55 of the Advanced Dungeons & Dragons Monster Manual 2. Be sure to read up on it very thoroughly before using it in your game. First off, in melee combat, a Dracolist uses Claw Claw Bite very, very effectively. But before it closes to melee range, a Dracolist has two very special abilities. The first is the Petrifying Gaze. Anyone meeting the Critter's Gaze will be petrified. A special note here, the book does not specify that there's a saving throw. And this has been a point of contentious debate among players and Dungeon Masters for decades. I remember arguments on Draco lists. Well, you, it has to have a saving throw, otherwise why do you have a saving throw versus petrification? Yeah, but the book specifically doesn't say... It, it, the book doesn't say it. It gives a saving throw for the breath weapon, but not for the gaze weapon. Yeah, but... You know, I'm back and forth and back and forth. Um... Frankly, I think it should be up to the individual dungeon master whether or not player characters get a saving throw versus petrification. In my humble opinion, since the breath weapon specifies a saving throw, and uh, then the gaze weapon does not get a saving throw because it, it's not specified. Again, that's just my opinion. The reason I, I say that is because there's also a chart for whether or not you look into its eyes while you're doing melee combat with it. So to me, that that covers the, the saving throw aspect of it. That's just my opinion. Uh, secondly, the critter can spit acid for 4 to 24, 4 d6, 4 to 24 points of damage. Half of that if a save versus breath weapon is made. The Draculus can spit such acid three times per day. Now, this makes it a very, very difficult creature to combat. In my opinion, the Draculisk would start out with the Gaze Weapon because it can eliminate the most enemies in the shortest time. Then, before those enemies can close the distance, a healthy dose of Acid, which will cover them and the floor, should be liberally applied by said Draculisk. I did a video of why Black Dragons are so effective underground. And you got you got to go check that video out. You'll see what I'm talking about. In underground settings, acid pools, and if you're if you're fighting a black dragon and it's standing in a pool of acid, in order to fight it with a melee weapon, you have to be standing in the acid, therefore taking damage every round. Even if it's only half damage, that's still a lot of acid damage. Unhealthy work environment. <laughs> I believe that's a term I use. <coughs> Excuse me. Note. The chart in the critter's description regarding the chances of meeting the gaze also note that the gaze is in effect all the time, and any player character fighting the Dracolisk in melee combat fights at penalties. This thing is extremely effective, extremely effective, especially if it has to guard a specific area. You put it, you put the, like a door at the top of a set of stairs in a narrow area. And then put that Dracolisk, you know, that being the only way to get to the door. And then you put that Dracolisk at the bottom of those steps in a narrow, confined area. Yeah, that that's that's a hell of a guard right there. That's going to be difficult to get through. Uh, especially if it decides it standing in a pool of acid is nice. Which, you know, being half black dragon, it's immune to. So, you know, just saying. A Dracolisk can be very, very effective as a guardian. They fly for short periods of time, but they're not great at it. But they do have six legs, and they're very fast. So keep that in mind. Uh, I prefer, if you're going to put a creature as a guardian, especially one this powerful, with a gaze weapon and an acid weapon, 
that it's it, that it is immune to, I would suggest a narrow corridor leading up to those steps because that's less of an area for these people to bypass the monster. Plus, in an enclosed area, the asset, you know, just saying. I don't want to harp on that, but to me, that's killed more player characters in my games than just about any other underground setting. It's a black dragon in an underground setting. Man, I've had groups of players, oh, well, it's a dragon, underground, run! It's going to be a black dragon, run! You know, that kind of thing. Not all of them are black dragons, but it's nice to know they 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 are paying attention. I hope this finds everybody well, and kudos to the guy who suggested the Draculist. Great, great monster. Hope this finds everybody well. You folks have a good day. God bless one and all. Devo Poland, a scientific representative of a pacifist race called the Gandiri, is sent away as an exchange officer. His objective, to learn the one skill his species never developed, to fight. And he's sent to learn that skill from the one species who does it better than any other in the galaxy, humans. If you like science fiction with an upbeat military tone, check out my novel, Vanguard One.